Hi everybody! Today I am here to discuss with you absolutely nothing. I have nothing to discuss with any of you. In all of these videos it appears I have made full of myself. I have egg on face. But the children of the night have asked me to discuss something else. It's the sweet music they make. No, actually I'm here to discuss with you making a fool of yourself. Here we are on the advent of April Fool's Day, and kind of perhaps being la idea. Uh, in tarot, number zero is indeed the idiot. Sometimes when people get that in a reading, they fear the worst, and that I am indeed a schmuck, the biggest. But frankly, it's not true. If you get number zero in a reading, it vibrates to the Kabbalistic Aleph, and Aleph means the ox that has the courage to break new ground. So why is it? that the first card in the Major Arcanum would indeed be Leon or the Fool. Because it's the Fool who's the visionary. It's the Fool who's even willing to risk being called the Fool, to have the courage to listen to the voice within. The Fool is often seen as dancing on the edge of a cliff, being perhaps mesmerized by all the butterflies and the energy fields and the crows that float overhead, not realizing that he's on the precipice of falling over the edge. But the fact is, the fool inevitably lands on his feet because he trusted that he would. So indeed, he does. Is it easy? No. I mean, my God, when you think about all that you go through in your life, it's enough to drive you freaking crazy. I have just gone through recently $10,000 worth of all sorts of uh, uh, radiopharmacological drugs that have been just poured into my, the body I rent, this poor body, to have all sorts of tests done, a huge percentage of which I have to pay for. I'm told not to call the surgeon. They'll contact me with my April 1st Fool's Day surgery. And of course, when, when I finally call them, though, what gives? Oh, uh, Daniel, we have no record of your testing or that you're even here. Fantastic. But you know, ultimately, what are you going to do? Are you going to let the world make you crazy? No. you got to almost treat each day like nothing will stop me and nothing will stand in my way. Because if you let them make you crazy, they will. And then you can forget about not getting number zero. Ladio. You might as well get the Ten of Swords. I'm losing my mind. You have to summon up a lot of courage inside yourself and you have to be strong. Yeah, the world can kind of, and, and, and by the way, not even intentionally. Everybody's busy. Everybody's got a lot going on. But it'll make you crazy if you've let it. So you've got to summon up in you first, frankly, what I feel when I started the reading in my some sort of Ukrainian egg voice, uh, the, the, the sense of first, uh, you know, you gotta find the, the, the joke in it all. You just got to. Because, in a way, you know what? Ultimately, it is kind of funny. And if you don't have a sense of humor, frankly, you're gonna age rapidly. You don't look this good, pushing 70, if you don't have a sense of humor. But me and my wife have it. I mean, granted, when I'm in pain every night, and I am in chronic pain, and I don't, and I don't take anything for it because I don't want it to interfere with my own uh, psychic sensibilities, you know what the last thing she says to me every night is we hold hands in bed before we go to sleep? The last word out of her mouth is, I'm sorry you're in pain, Dan. You know what? I drift away to sleep. And I ultimately wake up with a smile on my face because first, I'm awake. It's a brand new day. She's awake and she's there to share it with me. After all these years, and there's just too many reasons to be happy to let any of it get you down. So. Instead of counting all your woes, why don't you think of all the reasons to be cheerful? The sky is still blue. It's still filled with the, the avion and the winged, and they're floating past us. All the crows called to me this morning. I said, hi, guys. They recognize me. It's wonderful. The Siamese cats are playing all around right now while I'm doing this video. My best buddy is recording this for me. You know, you gotta count all the little pearls of your life, all the little gems. There's every reason to be happy. Don't let anything promise me. Don't let anything chip away at you. I was very moved once when I, after I saw a picture of Betty Davis after she had one of her several major strokes. And she had a beautiful embroidered pillow that she was resting on. And the pillow had written on it, Old age ain't no place for sissies. Life is wonderful. 
and you and I have chose to descend into matter for a reason. And I'm very grateful to my mom and dad for giving me this opportunity, and my grandparents and my great-grandparents, to be here and to be an essential world and to be here for you guys. It matters so much to me. So let, let's smile. No matter what these days are like, and if these are even the end of times that some people say, I believe they're not, but no matter what they are, smile. Thoughts are things. Create that energy field in your consciousness and you will ultimately manifest happiness. But to see what the universe's perspective is about such things, let's indeed do a read. Voila! Enchanté. There's the cards I love. Okay, let's see what the vibrations have to say today. Okay, the energies today, in a moment where one embraces joy, says this. Numero uno. Ooh. The lips are sealed. But this vibration is ruled by Jupiter and Libra. The great gain that comes to you because of other people. This is a beautiful vibration. By the way, just for the heck of it, it says, live a life of truce. No one's to blame. Everyone's responsible. Could you hold on to the agony of resentment your entire life? Yes, you could. But why would you? It's not going to enhance the quality of your life. Embrace truth. Embrace truce. And then ultimately, truce leads to peace. The second vibrational field says this. Wow, see what happens? The Ten of Cups. Now, even somebody that has no intuitive ability whatsoever, but understands the dynamic of the Arcanum should know this. The Ten of Cups, which is emotionally ruled, is also ruled by Mars in Pisces, an aggressive energy in a very spiritual place. They call this, well, ancients called it, satiety. Modernists call it Maxwell. What are you doing? He's doing something he shouldn't be to Siamese way. Modernists call it the wish card. You'll get ultimately what you wish for. This is one of the very few vibes in our, the Arcanum where it is said that God or the high powers say, I'm going to give you what you need to be happy. Ask for it. Great. Thank you, God. And the third vibrational field, the helix of the pyramid today, as we strive to embrace joy, says this. Here's how you get there, too. With temperance, with moderation, with good sense, with a balanced attitude. And this is, again, I, I, I can't recall if we've seen it before, but let me just remind you of the mythology. Joseph Campbell would be proud I did. It's ruled by Diana the Huntress. And the notion is, even if you're, the desire you wish to manifest is far away in the distance, your long shot could be a hit. All you've really ultimately got to do is believe. So ancients call this by temperance, Sagittarius ruled. Modernists call it art. And isn't the art of living embracing joy? So the choice is yours. Spring is here. The blanket of smell has melted and the bulbs awaken and they're all electric. You could take time to smell the tulips. The highest synth especially you know, you just got to take those moments. And yet sometimes you have to steal those moments. But you've got to take those moments for joy. Please do it. It's a free vacation. It's just getting yourself in that zone of saying, my life is worth it. My life is happy. I do have a purpose. I'm either going to find it or I'm going to ultimately create it. And thank you for listening to me.